Hi, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I like to read children's stories. I might eventually do other stuff, but that's where I'm starting with right now. So if you like to hear the stories and you like to follow, please subscribe, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment. If you want a shout out to say hello to you, your children or your pets, I'll be happy to do so. And speaking of, I'm saying hello to Miss Marin and Miss Claire. Hi, happy to see you. Hopefully you're listening to the stories and um, following along. And I just want to say hello to Marin and Claire. And um, welcome back, Stormy. I know you like to listen. So this is reading from King of the Dollhouse by Patricia Clapp. We are on chapter five, and I'm also going to read five and six today because they're kind of short. So here we go. For the next few days, Ellie could hardly bear to leave her room. With the queen in residence, there was always something going on in the dollhouse, and Ellie spent hours sitting on the fuzzy rug watching. With a very small thorn, rose thorn and webs of spider web, lengths of spider web, the queen sewed new suits for the peanut butter babies, finishing them so quickly it seemed like magic. What beautiful colors, said Ellie in admiration. Where did you find the material? The queen held up a little suit in each hand. The yellow and red ones are made of rose petals, and this one, pink one, is from hollyhock blossom. And this white one I made from dandelion fluff. It's harder to work with, but delightfully soft. You're so gifted, your royal highness. Thank you, Ellie. But it's simply a matter of one's inclinations, I think. Everybody does some things well. No one can do everything well. It all works out rather neatly, I find. The king sang a lot when he went about his house work, keeping the dollhouse even more immaculate than usual. The queen herself showed Ellie how to fashion a leather duster out of a few small under feathers from a molting sparrow, fastened onto a bit of toothpick, and wound and round and round with thread. With this, King Bora Bora energetically flicked away at the dollhouse furniture until everything sparkled and shone. The peanut butter babies played on the floor at their mother's feet as she sewed, getting themselves wound up in the spider web, listening happily as she told them stories of her adventures. When all the little suits were finished and put on the babies, Ellie filled the dollhouse sink with warm soapy water and King Bora Bora washed out all the old suits hanging them a piece of thread strung over the bathtub in case of drips. So there's the queen sewing new suits for the peanut butter babies. Everyone was so busy and happy that when Ellie heard her mother coming down the hall toward her bedroom, there was barely enough time to warn the royal family. The king became rather flustered and started to hide the little wet suits in the hall closet instead of the babies that were usually in them. But the queen picked up as many babies as she could carry, shooing the rest ahead of her into the hiding place. Leave the laundry, Bora Bora, she told the king. Come along. Hurry now, my love. Don't panic. Dropping the armfuls of tiny wet soups into the bathtub, the king ran after her, and to Ellie's great relief, the closet door closed just as the mother, her mother came into the room. She looked very happy. I finished my book, she said. The book about Miss Pinkletoe. I really finished it. Oh, good, Ellie said. That's the fastest book that you've ever written, I think. I think so, too. It must be because you've done so much to help me. She sat on the edge of Ellie's bed and smiled. What have you been doing with yourself all these days? Oh, playing with my dollhouse. Ellie's mother leaned forward a little so she could look inside the little rooms. Forgotten how nice it is. Then a puzzled expression came over her face. But where are all the dolls, Ellie? Where's the dollhouse family? Don't you play with them anymore? Not anymore, said Ellie truthfully. They never seem to bend right. They didn't look real. No dolls ever do, do they? Ellie's mother said, and Ellie was surprised that she soon was to find that grown-ups could think properly. I used to have a dollhouse when I was your age, and I always wished my dolls could turn into real little people that could move about by themselves and talk to me. Ellie has opened wide. You did? Of course, but it never happened. It's too bad there aren't real any little people small enough to live in a dollhouse, isn't it? Ellie took a deep breath. Should she tell her mother right then about King Bora Bora and Queen Jus Griselda and the peanut butter babies? Would her mother understand and think it was all right for them to go on living there, eating all the peanut butter and never having to hide in the hall closet? Before Ellie could make up her mind, her mother stood up. Sometimes I thought about writing a story about a dollhouse that had real little people living in it, she said. But I don't suppose children would believe anything like that was possible. She lifted her arms up and stretched hard. It's so good to finish Miss Pinkletoe. I think I'll go downstairs and bake something heavenly for dessert. She touched Ellie's hair lightly and went out of the room. Ellie sat gazing at the dollhouse. I'd believe a story about little people living in a dollhouse, she whispered to herself. I'd believe it. It was not long after that that Ellie woke up one morning to find the queen had gone. Oh dear, I did hope she was going to stay for a while. One can't expect her to hold on to any anyone as adventuresome and restless as her royal highness, the king said. The queen is a free spirit. Do you know where she's gone? She meant something about a canoe trip and shooting the rapids, I believe. Shooting the rapids, Ellie said. That sounds dangerous. I expect it is. It seems there is a spot 
where the water falls at least 10 inches into a deep, steep cliff that I can Im might imagine you call a stone. However, we must never lose faith in the queen's ability to take care of herself. She is quite an unusual person. Yes, she is, said Ellie, unusual in every way. It was very dark one night when Ellie awakened suddenly, not knowing what had aroused her. She rolled over in her bed until she was on the very edge from where she could see into the dollhouse. It was one of the stairs upstairs bedrooms. A lamp was lit, lighted, and in it was a tiny glow. Ellie could see King Borbor sitting in a rocking chair, holding one of the peanut ba babies in his lap. And the baby was crying softly, and King Borbor was singing as sooth soothingly as he rocked. Little Miss Muffet sat on a tuffet, the king said, eating her peanut butter. Along came a spider and sat down beside her, causing Miss Muffet to flutter. Ellie thought the song was sweet, but the baby kept crying pathetically. Oh no, there's King Bora Bora and the baby all fussy, rocking, trying to soothe it. Your Majesty, Ellie said very quietly, what's the matter with the baby? King raised his head and Ellie thought she had never seen a sadder face. I don't know, he said helplessly. He, she, this one woke up crying. My dear, if the queen was only here. Ellie slid out of the bed and looked at the peanut butter baby, whose fist stuck into its mouth and was biting on it while it cried around it. It's cutting teeth, I think. That's the way my little cousin behaves when she's cutting teeth. She just bites on things and cries. Perhaps that's it, said the king. He looked down at the unhappy baby, patting his little head. I must admit, I feel really helpless at this moment. Oh dear, if only her royal highness could feel me calling out to her. Perhaps your ma she could, your majesty. Perhaps if you tried very, very hard. I mean, concentrate, said the king. Oh, look, there's the queen on adventures with her mouse. Do you think she'll answer the king? We'll find out. Yes, just as hard as you can. And I will to her. Perhaps the queen will hear us both and come home. The king's face assumed a very determined expression. Very well, he said. Let us both call the queen as hard as we can inside her house. Perhaps she'll hear us. Are you ready, Ellie? Yes, your majesty. All right, now he concentrated. The king squeezed his eyes shut and frowned intensely. Ellie clenched her hands in her toes and thought, Queen, as hard as she could, and the peanut butter babies went on crying pitifully. And not more than a second, there was a small screen noise from the corner of the room, and silver lightning came galloping across the floor with the queen riding jauntily side saddle. Whoa, whoa, silver, she said, and slid neatly from the mouse's back as it came to a halt. The baby sat up straight on its, on its father's lap, and at the sound of its mother's voice began to cry even harder, stretching out its little arms, and the queen rose, holding the infant. Griselda, my love, he shouted in this tiny voice, you heard us calling you. I did indeed, Bora Bora, my sweet. Good evening, Ellie, what is the trouble? By this time, the little queen was running up the dollhouse steps and through the door, and then on the stairs into the bedroom where the king stood. It's the child, my dear, the king explained, whichever one this is, Ellie thinks it's cutting teeth. The queen lifted the baby from its father's arms and sat down in the rocking chair, crating the infant loverly. Putting one finger into the baby's mouth, she rubbed gently on its gum and smiled. Ellie's quite right, said Mar she said Marmaduke is cutting his first tooth. Oh, said the king, is that Marmaduke? Of course, my love. Shifting the weeping baby slightly, she reached into the silver girdle of her gown and unclasped a small pouch made from a violet petal. Reaching in, she brought forth a seed that had been skillfully hollowed out to serve as a jar. She dipped her finger into it and then rubbed it on Marmaduke's gums, whereupon the tiny creature stopped crying instantly and its little mouth curved into a smile. There, my poppet, queen crooned. That's better, isn't it? Whatever did you do, your majesty, Ellie said. What was it that you put on the baby's mouth? The juice of an herb I found in one of my field expeditions. The queen replied, it's just fortunate I was wearing my first aid kit when you were calling me. She looked down at the baby again, contented now and grinning happily. Marmaduke looks just like his father. She said with pride and the king looked over at her shoulder and chuckled. So that's her, Mar that was, oh, that's Marmaduke, he said, I should have known. Rising, the king stared down the stairs, still carrying the baby. And the king, after turning off the nursery light, followed her into the living room. Somewhere, somehow, Ellie felt it was time she went back to bed. Good night, your majesty, she said softly. I'm glad you're back, your royal highness. Thank you, Ellie. Good night. Cuddled down in her bed, Ellie could still see the king and queen through one of the dollhouse windows. From the way in which they nodded their little heads, from the deep affection she could see in their eyes, it was obvious they were in complete agreement. She's going to stay with them now, Ellie said happily. The queen will give up adventuring, and I'll have them to play with every day. Being quite sure of this, she was astonished a moment later to see King Borbor walk to the front door with his wife, embrace her fondly, and watch as she left the dollhouse carrying the teething baby. Tucking the infant under one arm, she raised both hands into her mouth, placing the little finger between her lips and giving an absolute ear-splitting whistle.
The mouse galloped up to the door, pawing the floor impatiently while the queen swung herself into the saddle, still holding Marmaduke, who was giggling happily as he clung to his mother. Then with a gay wave of her hand and a shout of encouragement to the mouse and a gentle prod with her spurs, the queen sped away, clutching her baby to her and handling the mouse rein dexterously. From the little front door, the king waved and waved until she was out of sight. Well, said Ellie, set up straight, but very well, said the king, contentedly closing the door. But she didn't stay, Ellie scolded. I thought she's going to stay. Your Royal Highness has other plans, King Borobor said haughtily. She's not going to take Marmaduke canoeing and shooting the rapids, is she? Ellie asked worriedly. He's, he's too young. King's voice was reproving. The queen may be adventuresome and a little flighty, but she is an excellent mother. You need to have no concern about a Marmaduke. Now, I think I shall go to bed. We will see you in the morning. And with no further ado, the little king marched up the stairs, fell into bed, and started to snore immediately. Ellie put out the light in the living room. Well, now what do you think of that? The queen has taken off with one of the babies for an adventure. Hmm. We'll have to read tomorrow to find out what happens. Um, hopefully you'll come back and hear, hear some more. And thank you for listening to my story today.